Huh? No way, ¿Qué pasó? A 10-year-old putting a face to the more than 19,000 migrant children and teens now in federal custody. This noon, Steve Cavazos details the ongoing challenges intake facilities are facing as they try to care for these children. A pair of roommates now sharing legal troubles, police accusing them of playing a role in a man's death. How witnesses helped police with this case. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. It is a difficult journey. The final destination still not clear. Thousands of migrant children have arrived in the U.S., many unaccompanied. And emergency intake sites are becoming overwhelmed with the growing numbers. Stephen Cabasos details the heartbreaking and harrowing steps these children are taking. Gut-wrenching moments from the U.S.-Mexico border. The boy as young as 10, afraid, abandoned, and alone. A Border Patrol agent found him wandering in this rural field. The boy seen here asking for help. He tells the agent he came without his parents, but he traveled with a migrant group that left him behind. He was taken here to a nearby child detention center in Donna. This video shows the crowded facility, which is sheltering thousands of children who are now under the care of the federal government. Here at home, hundreds more unaccompanied minors were bussed over to Freeman Coliseum's Expo Center in just one week. Federal and county officials now report 1,370 children are being cared for at the facility. Congressman Henry Cuellar was in Windcrest today and talked about the ongoing situation and the challenges intake facilities are facing. Too many people coming in, not enough people going out. The congressman adding. Right now we're facing a humanitarian crisis and I do use the word crisis. Now the congressman was expected to tour the Expo Center along with Congressman Tony Gonzalez today, but due to a scheduling conflict that has been postponed until a later date. New at noon, a fire in an east side backyard leaves an RV camper destroyed. Fire crews telling us a woman was inside her home in the 400 block of Lula May when she heard a popping sound this morning and she found the camper in her backyard completely in flames. She told firefighters an electrician had just hardwired the new camper to her home. So far, fire crews think the fire was electrical, but arson is investigating. The woman, the only person home at the time, and she was not hurt. Two women who shared a home, now both are being housed at the Bear County Jail. San Antonio police arrested one of them earlier this week, and now they've arrested the other one, both of them accused of murder. And as Katrina Weber reports, police got a few breaks in the case thanks to witnesses. Two women, roommates, now are accused of being partners in crime. San Antonio police arrested 23-year-old Miranda Garcia Monday in connection with a murder near downtown. Late yesterday, they took 34-year-old Crystal McCord into custody. They believe both played a role in the shooting death of 50-year-old Tommy Ray Tinner late Sunday night. Police found him in the driveway of this Circle K store on San Pedro near Interstate 35. The arrest affidavit says witnesses told them the two women had an argument with Tinner at their nearby apartment and told him to leave. When he came back later, police say they shot him, then ran away. The affidavit says witnesses led police to the women's apartment here in this building. And it says during a search, police found money, drugs, and other evidence tying them to the murder scene. Police say after her arrest, Garcia admitted to shooting Tinner. They tracked down McCord later. It also took some doing to figure out who Tinner was because police say he had no ID on him but the medical examiner eventually was able to identify him. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A man who was rescued from a house fire on the city south side yesterday afternoon has now died. The medical examiner's office identified him as 73-year-old Alfredo Hernandez. The fire happened in the 1500 block of Estancia near Roosevelt in Loop 410. A neighbor told fire crews that the man was wheelchair bound and might still be inside. They got him out and he was taken to a hospital to be treated for smoke inhalation, but that is where he later died. And this noon, we're still waiting to learn the name of one of the people found dead inside a north side home yesterday. However, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office did identify the other person as 53-year-old Todd Hafer. Officers found his body and a woman's body at a home in the 2000 block of Chittam Trail during a welfare check. This after someone told police they hadn't seen the man or woman in a few days. 
Neighbors say they are heartbroken by the tragedy and are praying for the family of the victims. Investigators say it's too early to tell if the case is related to domestic violence or if it could be a murder-suicide. A Texas state trooper who was shot during a traffic stop last week honored this morning as loved ones said their final goodbyes. 38 year old Chad Walker shot by a driver he had pulled over last month near Mejia. That's in the Waco area. After the shooting, Walker was put on life support until his organs could be donated. He died on March 31st. Walker is survived by his wife and four children. Authorities searched for the man accused of shooting Walker. He was later found dead. Limestone County Judge Richard Duncan says the suspect killed himself. May elections are coming up in just a few weeks, and one issue on the ballot, a proposition aimed at police reform. And you'll get the chance to learn more about this issue tomorrow. The Bear Facts KSET San Antonio Report Partnership will host a live streamed debate on Proposition B. The San Antonio Police Union, Fix SAPD, and the city attorney are invited to discuss the impacts of Proposition B. Steve Spreester will be moderating the debate along with Iris Dimmick from the San Antonio Report. You can watch the live stream on KSET.com tomorrow night. It starts at 7. And you can head over to our website right now to find more ways to watch. And you can take a look at what else is on the ballot in May. In mid-February, Texas was hit with a winter storm unlike any we've seen in years. There have been tons of questions since then about how our state's power grid could have been so vulnerable. In this week's episode of Case That Explains, we answer some of those questions. You can watch Case That Explains, the Texas power grid failure, now on our website. Just go to ksat.com slash explains. You can also watch it on KSAT TV app, on Roku, Fire Stick, and many other smart TV devices. We'd like to get you up to date on the coronavirus pandemic in Bear County. 223 more people are now fighting a COVID-19 infection. Two people died after getting diagnosed with the virus as well. There was a slight increase in hospitalization since Monday. 189 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. 76 are in the ICU and 29 patients are on ventilators. President Biden setting a new goal for vaccine eligibility. He wants all American adults to be allowed to get a vaccine by April 19th. Meanwhile, as ABC's Ike Jochi reports, health officials now urging caution as states continue to lift restrictions. Nurses in Dearborn, Michigan, dressed in protective equipment, gearing up for a shift they say is starting to feel unfortunately familiar. We're seeing the numbers go up and um, we're still seeing that sick patient population coming in. Don Holland says the ER at Michigan's Beaumont Hospital is swelling with COVID patients. We can definitely feel that there is an uptick, you know, for the sick patient coming in. Today, Michigan leads the nation in new COVID cases over the last week. Health experts say as many as 70% of new infections there are from the contagious UK variant. This time, the patients are younger, like 28-year-old Pedro Gonzalez, a once healthy adult, now fighting for his life, nearing his third week on a ventilator. I thought he was going to be fine. I was oh, he'll be fine in a few days. You know, he's young, he's strong. Nothing's going to happen. Dr. Fauci says what's happening now in Michigan is also happening in spots across the country. We're seeing more and more young people get into serious trouble. Cases among the young and unvaccinated are growing. The CDC is warning about outbreaks among the young, many tied to youth sports and extracurricular activities. COVID cases are climbing in 19 states and deaths increasing in 21 states. President Biden urging Americans to register for a COVID shot, moving up his deadline for states to make all Americans eligible for the vaccine to April 19th, two weeks earlier than he'd promised. No more confusing rules. No more confusing restrictions. So far, 38 states have already opened vaccinations for everyone 16 and older. 42% of adults have already received at least one dose of the vaccine, including 80% of teachers, school staff, and child care workers. President Biden says it's progress that must continue. Even moving at the record speed we're moving at, we're not even halfway through vaccinating over 300 million Americans. Now, the president reiterated that he'd like to see people get together in small groups by Independence Day. Ike Jaji, ABC News, Washington. Still to come this half hour, we've got some news concerning Nike and Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson in a few minutes.
This Friday is the kickoff to the 2021 San Antonio Book Festival. Nearly 200 local, regional, and national authors are going to take place, take part rather. This year, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the festival will take place entirely online April 9th through 11th. It is a free, family-friendly event. If you'd like some more information, you can visit ksetcommunity.com. Outside with live cam. You know, yesterday we were talking about the humidity and that orange stuff all in one day. <laughs> yeah. Or yellow or whatever color it is. Uh, all I know yes. is it, the pollen is on everything, and now we have little green worms on everything. Yeah. Yes. So Sarah Spivey just wrote up a great article about those little worms yeah. um, and why we're seeing so much of them today because it was uh, windy at times yesterday. So you can check that out right now on KSAT.com. Speaking of the uh, orange or yellow stuff, I realized I don't have the right thing queued up here. The oak count is even higher today. I'm going to show you that right after the break, let you know what to expect for the rest of your Wednesday. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. So apparently if you like live near a green space, you need to pay attention to what other animals will show up to see if those worms are tasty or not. I think it's, it's a mess out there. You have your own little petting zoo going, don't you, David? I, man, we got everything out there. Yeah. So you have like armadillos, armadillos. coming to eat the I, green worms that have invaded your yard. Armadillos okay. and a possum, <laughs> box running around. It's like, oh it's like a smorgasbord in the backyard. Yep. Like, go ahead. It's oh. a circle of life, David. I, that, very true, very true. Uh, yes, here's the oak count for today. This is our highest reading so far this season. Incredibly, it's even higher than it was yesterday. Over 18,000. If you want to round up, we'll go 19,000. So oak continues to be an issue here as we are in the peak of oak season. Mold, thankfully, everything else, pine and grass are low. So we've had plenty of clouds this morning, even a little bit of mist, some very light rain here or there. But we're going to really start to see some sunshine here shortly. Skies will be clearing out likely within the hour. 76 at the airport now still pretty humid out there with the dew point in the mid 60s off to the south and to the west. Temperatures are rapidly climbing into the 80s. It's already 82 in Catula already up to 87 in Del Rio. Big reason for that. There's a lot more sun off to the west in places like Del Rio and Valverde County. Meanwhile, Along and east of 35, still a lot of cloud cover for the time being, but we're going to see skies gradually clear out this afternoon, and that's because we've got a front moving through. That's going to help to clear out a lot of the cloud cover, and we'll also drop our humidity as we get into the second half of the day. So dew point numbers now for most of us are still pretty high in the 60s. That's feeling muggy, but look behind this front. We do have some drier air dew points in the 50s from Fredericksburg to Rock Springs, and for the rest of the day, we are going to see some of that drier air seep in. And so along and north of 35 by this afternoon, you're going to notice a pretty sizable drop in humidity. Now, if you're down closer to the coastal bend, places like Beeville, uh, Live Oak County, even Carnes County, this dry air is going to kind of pump the brakes right before it gets to you. So for some of our southeastern most counties, not necessarily going to get in on a lot of that drier air this afternoon, but most of us through the afternoon and evening will see a nice drop in humidity overnight, though. Southerly winds return. That's going to bring the moisture back in for everyone. So this dryer that moves in this afternoon, it is going to be fairly short lived. But as it does move in today, that's going to help to boost our temperatures. So where humidity drops, our temperatures will be able to shoot into the low, even mid 90s. So we're looking at a high around 94 in Del Rio this afternoon. Right around 90 here in San Antonio, some places down to the south and to the west could get into the upper 90s by the end of the day today. Things will be hot again tomorrow and into Friday. We're looking at highs here in San Antonio, 95 tomorrow, 96 on Friday. A little more seasonable as we get into the upcoming weekend. What about any rain? Well, it looks like our next chance of some rain will be on Friday as a piece of rain making energy uh, moves across our part of the state. However, at this time, that chance of rain looks pretty slim. 30% chance for some isolated showers and storms, mainly to our east. We're going to talk more about this rain chance coming up next half hour. As for the rest of the day today, a high near 90 as some drier air moves in this afternoon. Winds becoming northerly 10 to 15. Then humidity building back in late tonight. That'll set us up for some more morning fog and clouds tomorrow, but it'll end up being another sunny and hot day on Thursday with highs back in the mid to upper 90s. Guys. All right. Look at it, that 96. Grimacing a bit. Yeah.
Thanks, Katie. Uh-huh. Hey, the Spurs are on the road to start a five-game road trip tonight in Denver. We'll talk about that when we come back. And also when we come back, the Triangle of Toughness. We'll show more of that to you coming up. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Just breaking this morning, Nike has suspended its endorsement deal with Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson because of the sexual assault and inappropriate behavior allegations made by nearly two dozen women. Two of the women who have filed 22 lawsuits against Watson speaking out, one in a statement, the other in person at the offices of attorney Tony Busby in Houston. She has actually been in public identified as Ashley Solis, who was the first to file a civil lawsuit against Watson alleging sexual assault and inappropriate conduct. I got into massage therapy to heal people. To heal their minds and bodies. To bring peace to their souls. And Deshaun Watson has robbed me of that. He took that away from me. He tainted a profession in which I take enormous pride. Busby added that Solis is also one of two women who have filed complaints with the Houston Police Department that confirms it has opened an investigation. San Antonio Spurs are in Denver tonight where they will begin a five-game, seven-night road trip. It features back-to-back -back games against both the Denver Nuggets and the Dallas Mavericks, ending in Toronto next Wednesday. And they will start this trip shorthanded again. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, will miss his ninth straight game with a sore right wrist. Trey Lyles will be out again with a sore right ankle. And DeJounte Murray is questionable after he was a late scratch Monday night with a sore right foot. The Spurs are 12 and 17 at home, where they just went two and seven on their longest home stretch. While they are 12 and seven on the road, even though they have the second toughest schedule down the stretch. DeMar DeRozan was asked why the Spurs play better on the road than at the AT&T Center. I wish it was something I could tell you, um, but I think our sense of urgency when we on the road kind of kicks in a little bit more. Um, kind of forced to be out your comfort zone and, you know, you kind of feel like everything is against you and we go out there and play with that sense of urgency that we need. Um, and it's there when we play on the road and, you know, we definitely going to need it this time around. They're going to need a lot more than urgency. Tomorrow or tonight, they're at Denver. Then Friday, they're at Denver. Then Sunday, they're at Dallas. Monday, they're at Dallas. So that back-to-back -back is two nights in a row. And then Wednesday, they wrap up that, home, or that road trip in Toronto. Hey, what a difference a year makes. Last year, no spring workouts due to COVID. This week, the UTSA Roadrunners are in their second week of spring workouts. And just think what they can do after getting in a spring workout. Second-year head coach Jeff Trailer led the Roadrunners to one of their best seasons ever with seven wins and only their second bowl appearance. Yesterday, our photographer Mark Mendez, as well as others, were allowed to get in and see what that 2-1-0 triangle of toughness drill in their pads is all about. As much as we try to not make football a physical game anymore, it's still a physical game, right? You still got to be tough. It's why it's, the, it's why it's the greatest game. Uh, if you watched the basketball game last night, there's no doubt how physical Baylor was. Uh, you can just tell they, they imposed their will. And uh, we, we try to take great pride in that. We don't hide from it. Uh, it's, it's our mantra. It's our brand. You know, we, we pride ourselves on the 2-1-0 triangle of toughness. So we start all practices in full pads uh, with that drill. Ooh, the Roadrunners will kick off their 2021 season on September the 4th at Illinois. The 2-1-0 Triangle of Toughness. Ooh. Look I never that. doubted that football was a physical sport. <laughs> it's good stuff Maybe right it's there. just me. Yeah. An announcement may have some far-reaching effects on the use of a shot that is key to global efforts to end the pandemic. What health officials are now saying about the AstraZeneca vaccine. Got pets? They're playful and cuddly, but if you're not careful, they can also be a source of E. coli and other germs and bacteria. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your side, Marilyn Morris, with the steps you can take to keep your pet and your family healthy. Now to the latest on the Derek Chauvin murder trial. More key witnesses taking the stand for the prosecution, including senior police officers. ABC's Rita Roy tells us how the defense is trying to use their testimony to its advantage. Today, witnesses back on the stand, including this use of force expert. Mr. Floyd was not resisting. He was in the prone position. The pressure 
um, that he was that was being caused by the body weight uh, would uh, could cause positional asphyxia, which could cause death. Nine Minneapolis police officers, including the police chief, have now testified against one of their own. As prosecutors try to prove it was Derek Chauvin's knee that killed George Floyd, Chauvin has pleaded not guilty. Lieutenant Johnny Mercil, a use of force instructor who trained Chauvin in 2018, saying Chauvin went too far and violated department policy. Would it be appropriate and within training to hold a subject in that prone, restrained position with a knee on the neck and a knee on the back for an extended period of time after the subject has stopped offering any resistance. No, sir. Officer Nicole McKenzie, who coordinates medical support services for the department, also took the stand. Prosecutors using her to disprove the defense's argument that Chauvin wouldn't have known Floyd was in distress because he was still talking. There is a possibility that somebody could be in respiratory distress and still being able to verbalize it. In their cross-examination, the defense trying to show the crowds of yelling bystanders distracted officers. Have you ever had to perform... Uh, emergency services in a just a, not even a hostile crowd just a loud excited crowd yes is that in your experience more or less difficult it's incredibly difficult defense attorney Eric Nelson also arguing the drugs in Floyd's system could have made him more difficult to subdue they might um, have what we you know call superhuman strength the trial so far is ahead of schedule, expected to last another two to three weeks. The defense will soon get their turn to call witnesses to the stand. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The Treasury Department sent out another 25 million stimulus payments, and those people should receive that money today. The Treasury Department says it has issued more than 156 million payments as part of the latest coronavirus relief plan, and that includes today's payments. Since March 12th, the government has paid out $372 billion, a sum that likely boosted hiring last month as Americans had more money to spend. Today's recipients are primarily Social Security beneficiaries who hadn't filed 2019 or 2020 tax returns. The European Union drug regulator says that it has found a possible link between the AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine and a rare clotting disorder. However, it will not impose any new age restrictions on the AstraZeneca vaccine, saying the benefits of the shot still outweigh the risks. Its UK counterpart, however, said it would offer people under 30 the choice of another product. The European Medicines Agency described the clots as a very rare side effect. Experts reviewed several dozen cases that came mainly from Europe and the United Kingdom, where around 25 million people have already received the AstraZeneca vaccine. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office has determined what caused Tiger Woods to crash his SUV last month in Southern California, and they'll release those findings this afternoon. The crash happened back on February 23rd. Woods hit a raised median just outside Los Angeles. The SUV he was driving crossed through two oncoming lanes of traffic and uprooted a tree on a downhill stretch that police said is known for wrecks. Woods is in Florida recovering from the multiple surgeries he had to have. A spokesperson for the Los Angeles County District Attorney says that no felony or misdemeanor complaints against Woods were filed through their office regarding the crash. An unmanned Dutch cargo ship may be in danger of capsizing in heavy seas off the coast of Norway. As ABC's Julia McFarlane reports, this comes after the crew was evacuated following a distress call from this vessel. A race against time on stormy seas. Norwegian officials race to prevent an abandoned transport ship from sinking. The Eames lift Hendrika, stuck in the North Sea and listing dangerously in 50-foot waves, dozens of miles off the coast of Norway. The ship has been drifting empty since Monday, and officials fear it may capsize, spilling tons of oil into the ocean. Now the race is on to seize the ship before it's too late. A specialist team mobilized, sending a powerful anchor tugboat to its location. The plan is to lower a specialized group of people that will be trying to get on the ship and to connect the tow to tugboats. Meanwhile, footage newly released shows a daring rescue on Monday with helicopters and rescue boats saving the crew members on board. Some leaping into the frozen waters as the ship tilted dangerously. The water temperatures in the low 40s. Others airlifted to safety, hoisted up from the deck one by one by the rescue teams, all now safe. 
With the crew safely on dry ground, attention now on getting the ship to calmer waters and back to shore before time runs out. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Outside with live cam, it's 78 degrees. It's humid. It's got all that stuff in the air. And just when you think <laughs> you might deal with it, it's more stuff in the air. Yeah, th that number, that oak count just continues oh. to climb. It peaked over the weekend around 12,000. 15,000 yesterday, and we're up near 19,000 today. So we are in the thick of it, unfortunately. And yeah, you may see some of those oak worms out there. I think they got tossed around after breezy conditions yesterday. So far today, it has been a gray day, plenty of humidity as well. We're starting to see some breaks in the clouds here in San Antonio. And if you're up in the hill country or out west in Del Rio, you've already seen plenty of sunshine today. So here's what's going on. Uh, clouds sitting right over central Bear County at the moment, right over over San Antonio, really inside 410. But as you can see off to the north in the hill country, we've got clear skies from Bandera up to Kerrville and Sisterdale. A few clouds near Blanco and Canyon Lake, but skies will continue to clear out this afternoon because we've got a frontal boundary moving in from the north. This front certainly doesn't have much cold air behind it, but it does have a lot of dry air behind it. Look at these brown colors moving into the hill country, indicating some much drier air. Dew points just in the 50s for now, but they're really going to bottom out this afternoon as this front comes on through. So a lot of us, especially along the north of 35, will see a big drop in our humidity second half of the day today. That is going to help our afternoon high temperatures to really spike for places that see that drier air move in. So we are looking at a hot afternoon, thankfully not quite as humid, but hot nonetheless with highs in the mid 90s off to the south and to the west should be right around 90 here in San Antonio. Mid 80s off uh, to the east, places like Gonzales there, where it'll take just a little bit longer to clear out. But overall, sunshine coming this afternoon and a very unseasonably hot day as well. Today, the aquifer down at nearly one foot, seven tenths of a foot to 653.9. And here's another look at that pollen count. Oak very high, pushing 19,000. Thankfully, everything else is nice and low. We do have a Low chance of rain coming up on Friday, not Thursday, but Friday. We'll talk more about that rain chance and even get you a sneak peek of the weekend forecast coming up. Ursula. Thank you, Katie. Blue skies may be better for your health. The details on a new study looking at the effects of pollution. And a legal advocate fights for the underdog in a new series, a preview later on in the show. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Audio only social app Clubhouse reportedly planning to raise some fresh capital in a round that will likely bring their valuation to $4 billion. According to Bloomberg, the deal would quadruple their value since they were last valued back in January. The one year old app has surged in popularity over the last few months, racking up close to 10 million weekly active users. Meanwhile, after almost a year after reopening, Disney parks in Florida are now set to loosen their restrictions on their mask policies. Starting tomorrow, guests will be able to remove their face coverings to take outdoor photos in the park. Disney says guests must remain in one place while taking those photos and they still must adhere to social distancing protocols. And a new addition to Starbucks is proving to be a little too popular. Just about a month after adding oat milk to their menus, the coffee giant seems to be experiencing a shortage of the dairy alternative. Starbucks has leaned into their oat milk lineup as consumer demand for plant-based milk alternatives continues to grow. And that's your Chatter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from Shutter Studios in Lower Manhattan. President Biden now promoting his $2.3 trillion infrastructure plan directly to Americans. He is summoning public support to push past some Republicans who are summing up this plan as more big taxes and spending. The government is calling it the American Jobs Plan. President Biden says it's meant to be an investment in roads, schools, broadband and clean energy. He wants it approved by summer. On Monday, Biden received a boost from an unexpected source. The Senate parliamentarian greenlighted a strategy that allows him to have an evenly split chamber to rely on a 51 vote threshold to advance some bills. Usually that number is at 60 votes needed. 
Everyone who lives in a city deals with pollution, but could it be leading to premature deaths? With more, here's ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. A smoggy sky blocking the view of skyscrapers is not the view most people want in a city. A new study suggests having blue skies instead is better for your health. Researchers at the Institute for Global Health found that air pollution leads to thousands of premature deaths each year. If cities could drop their pollution rates to the World Health Organization's guidelines, it could at least reverse some of the deadly effects of pollution. And if you drop it even further, hundreds of thousands of lives could be saved each year. A blue sky isn't just a breath of fresh air anymore. It could actually save your life. The next time you see hazy skies, consider staying inside or moving away from the city. It might just help boost your health. With this Medical Minute, I'm Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News. As we go outside the live cam real quick, we're waiting on that report from the L.A. County Sheriff's Office on Tiger Woods and what they found about his, his accident. He was driving 87 to 84. He was doing, doing 87 in a 45 mile an hour zone, and he hit that tree at 75 miles an hour. Ow. That hurts. So, yeah, so there. if you it's, like to speed, there you go. That's what can happen. That's a yeah. really good thing he wasn't more seriously injured yes, than he so. was. Oh, man. Um, sure, there'll be more details coming out about that. Here at home, we've got some unseasonably hot days ahead, mid to upper 80s yesterday. How about low 90s today? mid 90s as we finish out the work week. On Friday, we will have a low chance of some isolated storms. We're going to talk about that rain chance coming up. Okay, let me get this straight. We've got humidity, mm -hmm. oak pollen, mm -hmm. green worms mm -hmm. falling from the trees. <laughs> what else is in the air? Green worms better than murder hornets, though? Um, okay, yeah. Ooh, okay. Good question. But what we, we, we want in the air is some rain. I know, I know. I, I was thinking the other day, I'm like, if we could just get some rain to wash some mm -hmm. of this oak. Wouldn't that be nice? Ooh, uh, it looks like we've missed our window for today. I can't rule out a stray shower or weak storm in our easternmost counties, but rain today will be up near Bryan College Station and closer to the Houston area. So we turn our attention to Friday. That's our next decent chance at some storms, but there are some conditions that will have to be met by Friday. So let's take a look at what's going on out there now. We've had a lot of clouds this morning, but the clearing line is moving in and that'll set us up for a lot of sun this afternoon. Elsewhere in far northeast Texas, northern Louisiana, Arkansas, that red box you see there that has popped up, uh, that is a tornado watch box. So some severe storms capable of producing tornadoes will be possible within that box as we head into the afternoon. Again, that is way, way to our northeast. That's where there is some better rain and thunderstorm making energy. We've got a low pressure system there in the central plains and a cold front draped all the way down into central and south Texas. It's this front that will be nudging in this afternoon, bringing some drier air along with it. But even future cast here. Look at all these storms being painted just off to our north and to our east. Again, if you're in places like Hallettsville, Lavaca County, I can't rule out a little stray shower passing you by this afternoon, but any concern for any strong or severe storms, that's going to be way off to our northeast. So after today into tomorrow, we'll see humidity try to build back in tomorrow morning. That'll set us up for a cloudy start with some patchy fog early on Thursday, but just like today, We'll see those clouds break up into the afternoon, mostly sunny tomorrow. Some drier air sneaking in once again will help to boost our afternoon highs into the 90s again on Thursday. So unseasonably hot again tomorrow. As we get into Friday, another storm system moving across Texas will bring in our next chance of rain. That chance is some isolated showers and storms we've been talking about. For now, we've got coverage on the lower side, the isolated side, just about 30%. Again, kind of similar to today, looks like better rain making energy will be placed off to our north to our east. However, can't rule out that if some storms can break what we call the cap or the lid on the atmosphere, we could have some stronger storms in our area. That's something we're going to be watching really closely over the next couple of days and just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. That's something we're going to have to watch as we get into Friday. For now, the severe weather risk on Friday is much higher in east and northeast Texas, places like Dallas and they're just north of Houston. In fact, there's really no formal severe weather risk <laughs> weather risk for our area on Friday. That may change as the forecast adjusts tomorrow and into early Friday morning. So keep checking back with us and we'll of course keep you updated. But again, if a few storms down here between Austin and San Antonio 
can break that cap on Friday. We may have some isolated storms in the area, so just something to keep in mind. For the rest of the day today, unfortunately, no rain in the forecast. Plenty of sun this afternoon. Some drier air settling in will help to put our afternoon highs in the low 90s. We're talking mid to upper 90s off to the southwest, places like Catula, uh, over to Carrizo Springs as well. You guys, there are already in the mid 80s. It's already 87 in Del Rio, where you have seen some more sunshine. So here's your afternoon forecast for today. Again, mid 90s, maybe even some upper 90s off to the south and to the west. Everyone else low 90s, uh, mid to upper 80s in the hill country, mostly sunny skies, a little bit breezy here and there as well. And we're also going to see humidity take a tumble this afternoon and this evening, but it will build back in overnight and that'll lead to morning clouds and maybe some patchy fog early Thursday. But just like today, plenty of sun in the afternoon will set us up for another hot day on Thursday. Look nice. at that. Summer's arrived. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 30 young men and women descend into madness on a deep space mission in search of a new home. That's the plot of a new movie. We're hearing from the stars of that movie coming up.